When I see Rainbow jumping Make me want to pinch my barb Cause she's so fine All right, our next fly is another Betas uh, fly. Uh, a young man by the name of Brad Beefus had taken a class from us, our traveling fly fisherman class, back in the 90s, and was able to uh, get a chance to see the way that we side posted uh, our parachutes, which you've uh, seen in the video here. And he came up with this pattern when he combined the bar merger and this little neat little trick of putting on a wing on a material uh, that you wouldn't even have thought, uh, the material being foam. He's going to tie a small wing because he was looking for a very visible uh, betas. We call it the uh, pseudochlorions, which is the, the small anywhere from 22 to 28 size betas. I call it the damn small betas, uh, DSB. But the, the micro betas is what uh, Brad calls it, and it is an umqua pattern. But I'm going to add a couple small little twists to it. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, my box is full of these. Uh, they're my very favorite micro betas to go to. I've never found a fish that was on the micro betas that wouldn't take this fly. This is a dandy. Now, first of all, Brad added a, a really neat thing to this uh, equation by changing the hook. He decided it was good to go to a hook that had a bigger gape and smaller sizes and we're going to use a 2457 Tiemco hook. There are a lot of hooks out there that you can find that are the caddis, pupa, and shrimp. But in these small sizes, this hook will really hold a big fish, and you will get big fish. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, actually use some of the same material. It's kind of amazing. We don't change too much on the way of material here. We're going to use some more uh, orange shucking. The biggest problem I find when people start going down into the small sizes, and this is a fly that you definitely want to tie in 22s and 24s. And I'm going to give you a couple hints on making it happen here. First of all, we're going to do, uh, find our halfway point is right where that point of that hook is, and that's where we're going to set up uh, our shucking material. Again, this is orange zelon or any heavy uh, uh, any antron yarn or anything like that looks going to be just a little bit smaller. Now, we're at the halfway point, we're going to take the foam. Now, Brad uses white foam. I'm going to use orange foam. I have a little bit tough time seeing that white foam. Now, what I've done is I've cut it on the edge here. And you can see there's the edge. This is two millimeter, and I've just cut out a small piece. Now, I don't use the round cylinders or post because guess what? Uh, the, the, the nice thing about this is uh, I've always got some of this orange material and it's a heck of a lot cheaper cutting it ourselves. Uh, now at, at, this, at this point we're going to uh, put up our post. Now this is what Brad learned uh, from our class is how we do the side posting. First of all I'm going to measure the length of the shank and right at this halfway point, I'm actually going to make it a little bit longer. I'm going to tie it in. We're just going to wrap about four or five good wraps, and then we're going to cut it as close as we can, and then wrap it. Notice how it compresses. Now at this point, we're going to go around. This is our side posting. Notice how I'm going around. If I had a dime there, I'd be just touching the edges. I'm going to feed the thread several of the patterns we've done in this DVD requires us to do this technique. The sooner you learn this technique, the easier uh, posting a wing is going to become. Now the beautiful thing about this, as you can see right here, is we're getting a really nice post built up. 
And even though it's a little bit of a wider wing, uh, when we cut it down, it's going to be just right. Now at this point, again, we're using a dot thread. I'm building up a little bit of the thread right here. Now, a lot of people might say, well, geez, Jack, you can get a really nice thin body using thread. Well, we want more floatability. And we also want a little bit of uh, flash to it. Now, I'm going to get some of my infamous rainbow thread or uh, super flash. Just remember that crystal flash is a little bit too heavy. So what we're going to need is we're going to need to look uh, for a lighter uh, pearlescent crystal flash. And it's out there. You just have to kind of search it out. And right now I'm going and adding one strand of this. Notice that we're kind of going down over the bend. Uh, that's another one of the keys to this fly is having the body bend around the hook. Uh, now we're going to again go back to our uh, blue wing olive material. And this is where we really got to make sure we have a nice thin body. Now again, I'm going to pull it. As you can see here, I'm pulling it long and I'm twisting as I pull it out. So I get a long fiber. And boy, I'll tell you, you can get it great for midges. This super fine is just great stuff. Uh, we've, we tend to use so much more Antron. And Antron is just real difficult to put on and get it nice and thin, a small fly like this. Uh, the nice thing about it is we'll get uh, of the flash from uh, that we need to give it a little, as I, as I mentioned before, the betas have a sparkle to them. Now we're going to work our way through, as you can see right here, working up to the post. Now we've got to be very careful, make sure that's nice and smooth. Back it up a little bit. Now we don't want to wrap into the post, but we want to also build up the thorax right here. And I'll go back and just double check to make sure that I have still a very good post there. As you can see, it's right there. And now I'm going to uh, put my thread right on the right-hand side of that post, and I'm going to wrap through it, making sure that we have a nice, thin betis body. Notice that you can see the sparkle coming through all the way to the front. Now, at this point, I'm going to wrap back and get ready to put on my hackle. Believe it or not, we're getting very close to uh, finishing this fly. I, I like flies that are very simple, and this one certainly uh, does qualify for that. There's a lot of different hackle that you can use on this fly. Uh, I'm a big fan of barred Plymouth Rock, and you can get it in Dunn, you can get it in, uh, uh, this is a dark rusty brown. Uh, I think that the Grizzly, especially in saddles, and let me tell you, there are, everybody now is making really fine. This is a saddle about a size uh, 20, and as you can see, it's got a very small vein. It'll be real easy to put on. Uh, you can use uh, the traditional blue dun uh, or the uh, natural dun color uh, if you would like. Uh, I find that this dyed brown or dun dyed grizzly will do the best for you. And notice that right now I'm going to I've I've taken the vein up, I've trimmed it right there, and now I'm going to wrap in front of the wing. Now at this point as long as you stay with the loon cement, the water-based cement, any of that type do not use lacquer. You can brush just a little of that uh, cement. That's going to dry nice and clear. It's going to help make the fly a little more durable as I said before. You're going to get a lot of fish, so you want it to be durable. All right, now I like to wrap it uh, clockwise. A lot of people like to wrap it the other way, but with this Griffin hackle plier, as you can see right here, I can really get it tight. We're only going to need one, two, and three. That's all the wraps we're going to need. Now at this point, you can see I've got it nice and tight. See how it moves? I'm going to pull up on the hackle, go underneath it with my thread, and tie it to the body. Then I'm going to pull it back, as you can see here. 
and I'm going to wrap my thread right and add what I call insurance wraps. That hackle's in for good. It's easy. You wrap it the way you normally wrap hackle, which is away from you. You're going to find that this is an easy way of doing it. Again, uh, I'm going to revert back on this one to my old uh, Thompson 55-year-old whip finish that my grandfather gave me. And we're going to then wrap the thread. And notice that this hook has got a nice big eye. It'd be easy for you to put your leader through it. And this is our, uh, our little bit of a change beef is microbatus. Now I'm going to trim that off and that's all you're going to really see is uh, that little uh, post. Now if I see some, uh, oh I love my friend Gary LaFontaine used to call these offending hairs. I, guess, I don't know who they offended but we're going to get rid of any offending hairs underneath it. You don't need much hackle. The post will help make it float. I can guarantee you this is a fly you want to tie up and have for in your box no matter where you go in trout country both in the spring and the fall. Uh, by the way, you can tie this fly in uh, uh, other colors. Uh, it makes a great trico imitation uh, with black. Uh, also uh, pale morning duns with your watery blue dun uh, uh, dubbing and again uh, lighten up the hackle a little bit. Uh, and you've got a, a pattern uh, literally f uh, for all seasons matching the smaller uh, mayfly. Ah, that's what you come to Wyoming for, a stream that I've never fished before. And look at this. I mean, there's some people that wait a lifetime to catch a cutthroat this big.